you participate with us to make this country a better place for us and for our future generation to live. Make it our home. Because we have no other home. This is our home. The Japanese ordered everybody who owned radio to get their shortwave and longwave cut because they, the Japanese didn't want the people to listen to other radio stations, you know, shortwave like Radio America or Radio Sri Lanka, Radio Sri Lanka or BBC. They wanted to listen to Radio Shonanto. Uncle Thomas, if you all don't know, is the first regiment to be trained by the British back in the 50s. All right, training by the British was not easy. The discipline was very tough. I can tell you that much. And we were given proper uniform, proper attire. And one of the things the British people don't like is they don't want you to linger around. I tell you, I did one thing that was wrong during at that time. And that was for sitting down on duty at three days pay cut. I don't know whether some of you can remember in 1961, somewhere in May, around this period, there was a hot sun, you know. The weather was very hot, like what it is now. Remember Bukit Hosui fire? Can anyone of you remember? And we were there, we were called out to come and assist. The only about 80 of us were pulled out to keep the looters out, the whole of that area. But today you see how beautiful that place is. Tiong Baru Plaza, Henderson, and all this whole area has all been changed. And we're gonna take you on a mysterious tour on the bus. We're gonna hand you a mini MP3 player in, in which you're gonna use it as you go along the route. Hello. Malay, Padang refers to an open ground or a plain field. The Padang was where the victory parade of the Japanese surrendering Singapore back to the British, marking the end of World War II in Singapore, was held. In the year 1966, 9th of August, that was where we held our first National Day Parade, okay? Two o'clock at the Padang, 20,000 Malays and Muslims were there. They listened to speeches by the religious leaders. And organizing that, uh, that event was also some political parties. AMNO was there, PAP was there. In fact, the chairman of the, of the Organizing Committee was Haji Yaakob Muhammad, our, our, one, uh, our Minister of State. And then when it came to the turn of the AMNO Secretary General, another Arab called Said Isa Monawa to speak, he spoke politics. Instead of talking about religion, about the foreign Muhammad's birthday, he talked about politics. We were then resettling people in Kampung Glam area because we want to redevelop that area and we want to move them to housing for estate. So he accused the government of chasing the Malays from their home and then that we would fight and defend our home even if we die. 
And when uh, the PP contingent was opposite the uh, Kalang as well, the riot started. What started it, how it started, why it started, nobody knew. There was no one who could say anything. It was here that the Japanese surrendered to Lord, Lord Louis Mountbatten in 1945, and Singapore was declared with the self-government status in 1959. Last time, uh, the ministers, la, VIP, la, Tuan Tuan Besar, la, they all used to sit here, you know? Here, yes. They sit here, but now you see who's sitting here? Me! You know why? I don't know where to go already! Did you know that the People's Action Party used to hold their inaugural meeting in the Memorial Hall in 1954? This historic building served as a hospital at the initial and later stages of World War II. Maybe you will know me by my uh, job name. I'm a coolie. You see this place? They call this the Ocean of Wealth. And technically it's a river, la, but River of Wealth doesn't sound very nice. Eh? So Ocean of Wealth. This ocean of wealth is a not an ordinary river. Huh? A lot of trading goes on here. Ships come and go every day. And in those ships are all kinds of things. Spices, materials. You know, sometimes I wish I was the one trading, you know. Boats coming in, they bring in spices from all over the world, and uh, of course, lah, you know, when you got spices, it's like you go to money. So, everyone here rich except me. I'm super, super rich. <laughs> I don't mind planting it. Anyways, do you hear about the separation? 6th of August, Friday, around 5, I saw the Kuan Yu there looking very grim, and there's a piece of paper. None of him. It was a letter written by the Tengku in his own handwriting telling the letter I did to Tu Jai that he had decided that Singapore should get out of Malaysia because the best way to maintain peace between the two countries. Then Kwanji was felt uh, quite uncertain about me. Being a Malay, he thought I was all for Malaysia, eh? for merger. So he said, Come to the next room. I went to the next room with him. He said, if I sign the separation agreement, will you sign? I said, of course I will sign. Because I'm of a PP member, I'm in the cabinet. I mean, it's, it's very bad for me if I don't sign. <laughs> there were nine ministers then in the Singapore cabinet. But all nine signed the separation agreement. Where the Esplanade is now was formerly the site of the former Satay Club a popular food haunt for Singaporeans. This is Alhambra Satay. I tell you, these people are the old legends in their own right, OK? These people hail back from the street hawkers back in the 50s. Capable leaders, honest uh, leaders who could uh, see forward and plan um, I mean to face whatever eventualities whatever what, 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 whatever problems we're having like now uh, the recession and that because you were prepared for it that's why we are not so bad you participate with us to make this country a better place for us and for our future generation because we have no other home this is our home.
fabulous, <laughs> fabulous, <laughs> fabulous.